This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? Good evening. I uh, I wasn't uh, singing tonight. I didn't feel much like singing. Okay, if you don't mind, if you if you don't mind that little rendition I do every night. Uh, if you uh, paid any attention to my Facebook page, paid any attention to the special program we did earlier today at four o'clock with uh, people who uh, who uh, were uh, involved, so to speak, uh, then you know that my best friend in this whole world, you know, the best for, only best friend I have left, uh, Rick Sheckman, Shecky, as some people called him, uh, died uh, last night, 11, 1.45 in the, even, in the morning, and um, uh, I found out about it this morning when I got up and I looked at the posts and the tweets, and the, not tweets, but texts from people to each other on this uh, text chain that we were on. That said that he had uh, he had died. I suspected that it was going to happen, because what happened last yesterday about uh, oh I don't know but, uh, with, with oh God I'm thinking maybe four o'clock in the afternoon, um, uh, one of the people wrote well, if you were planning on coming down here tonight or today do not come down, um, you know and that said it all for me because I figured the end was near. Because probably what they did is they had to get a hold of the family. His family uh, lives in Colorado, uh, in Steamboat Springs, and I think they had to make the decision on uh, whether they should keep him on life support or pull the life support. Uh, and I imagine when they pulled the life support, it was only a matter of time before he died. Uh, you know, it is uh, it is sad for me because he's a man who I absolutely love dearly as a friend and as a companion. For We, we were trying to figure it out, a friend of his, uh, Steve, um, Steve Weiner, who, by the way, got him the job at, at, uh, at Letterman. Um, we were trying to figure out how long I knew him because I was introduced to him by Steve Weiner and we figure it is somewhere in the neighborhood of between 45 and 50 years, probably somewhere more like 48 years or something like that, that I have known uh, Rick. And uh, he has been my good friend in all that time, and in all that time we've been in constant communication with each other. Uh, I can't remember a, a, a Saturday or a Sunday, sometimes I would call him on Saturday, call him Sunday, that we haven't talked to each other by telephone. When I was living out in California, it was every Saturday, exactly at four o'clock that I would call him, and exactly four o'clock he would be there, unless he was out on a cruise somewhere, in which case, you know. But we talked to each other every single week. We were in constant communication with each other. And uh, I can't tell you how much I cared for the guy. And it, 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 it's it's still numbing to me. Uh, I have not been able to really truly accept what has gone on, because just uh, what was it one one week ago, about a week ago, last week on the Monday show, that was his final appearance with us, and he was there and he was alive and he was well and kicking, and a uh, you know about a week and a half later, he's no longer with us. Uh, I don't know what to say, you know. Uh, all I can do is show a few pictures, for instance. This is the one that Marjorie picked. She fe feels it's a very loving picture of the two of us, and we look incredibly happy. And I don't know where that picture was taken, to tell you the damn truth. Uh, it might have been taken in California when we were having our, when we got married. And uh, we went back to the Bay Area to meet up with Rick at the Disney um, Museum. 
And we said to him, guess what we did? And he said, you got married. He knew immediately. I think maybe that picture was taken then, but I'm going to have to ask Marjorie about that. I have another picture here that's kind of interesting. Uh, this, is, this is something that Rick invented, okay? Uh, he would go all over the world. He loved traveling. He loved taking especially cruises, but traveling on exotic cruises, going to places like the Galapagos and Antarctica and, uh, you know, uh, up to Alaska. I mean, he would go on these very exotic um, uh, trips. And wherever he would go, he would take the camera and point it at himself and then shoot himself wherever he is. Now, it, it, there was a total lack of expression in most of these pictures, and this was one he took when we were in Monument Valley. Uh, we took a trip across the United States together, and we made it sure to stop at Monument Valley because as a movie buff, that's where John Ford made all his great movies with John Wayne. Uh, and um, that's Shecky at his happiest right there. Uh, but if he, I wish I had more of those pictures of his, and maybe I do, because I know he sent a lot of them to me every time he went somewhere. And um, uh, maybe if I go into my uh, correspondence with him, there are some of those pictures there. Uh, but uh, that was that was Shecky at his uh, very happiest uh, in Monument Valley. Uh, he was kind of mad at me at Monument Valley because I was carrying two very expensive pieces of electronic equipment that I was taking back to New York. And the roads there are very rough, and I didn't want to go in any further than we went because I didn't want the, the, you know, the electronic equipment to bounce around. And he wanted to go you know, further into Monument Valley, but you know, we see it there, and it's a beautiful shot. So that's another shot that I will always remember of Shecky. Okay. Um, so those, those are a couple of photographs of Shecky. Now what I'm going to do here, I've got a video. Uh, this, uh, every time, I used to take my camera everywhere, you know, and every time I got a bunch of footage, I would put it together. And I discovered this uh, yesterday, and I thought I would share it with you. A little bit of it is boring, but it, it's basically, it's called a trip to Shecky's. And what would happen was, uh, up until... COVID, about every other week, I would go over to Shecky's, and uh, we w I would go over, he would pick me up at the uh, train station, and then we would go either back to his place, or we would go out, as you're going to see here, into Queens, and go and get some, some sushi from a big sushi bar that no longer exists, and we'd go back to his place, and we'd talk for a while, and that was our s Saturday together, and this is just kind of one of those Saturdays and I thought maybe you might enjoy watching it. Okay, okay. We're, uh, we're on our way to see uh, Shecky out in Queens. Uh, Got to take a cab to the train, take the train to another train, take that train to another train, and then go up uh, all the way to Queens to Jamaica Estates. So that's what our bill of fare is for today. Well, this is a fairly new subway station. This is the new subway line, which is 2nd Avenue. down to the F train.
Jamaica, Queens, and uh, we're going to Jamaica Estates, where, by the way, Donald Trump grew up. There's Shecky. He always comes to visit me here, pick me up down here, but I got to get across the street to get to him. Hold on a second, Shecky. There we go. Ah. 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 Hello. Oh, are you live tweeting? Huh? No. Are you live videoing? No, no, no. This is a new toy. Oh, yeah? Yeah. This is the newest uh, GoPro. Oh, I think that guy's going out of business. <laughs> oh, is he really? Because oh, he's losing billions. This is the uh, probably the best one they've ever made because it's got a. It, there's no shake. Yeah. There's a built-in gimbal. They call it. You know, like remember I had that other thing where I had a, the whole device and it made the camera level. Yeah. Well, this has done away with that. Uh huh. So. Now apparently that guy uh, oh, is losing. A is that fortune. there's Trump's. Uh, Oh. There's Trump's manse. That's where he was. Uh, that wasn't where he was born. No, it's right up. It's on the other it, side it, of the street. Yeah. This is the evil neighborhood that spawned the devil. Yeah, well, yeah. you know. And we're going out to get sushi, so. This is my friend Shecky. The seldom seen Shecky. Except in every... You invented the selfie. Yes, I did, and, and now I don't do them anymore. <laughs> and now you don't do them anymore. He took pictures of himself by turning the camera around everywhere in Back the where world. You, well, actually, seriously, where you yeah. couldn't see what you were doing. Yeah. Now they have the opposite view cameras, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't do them anymore. No. Eh, too bad. That was a treat. No, I would do like 10 of them to get one of like, oh, that one looks okay. <laughs> you didn't know what you were shooting. No. You couldn't see it. No. Yeah. And I would look at them, and you know, that was that. Okay, well, it's off to sh sushi. <laughs> yeah. And there's yeah. the car that's really parked. Oh, this, this. Look at this. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me show them. This is, uh, this is how some. I can't get this to go yeah. down. No, well. it's, it's open. It, the window goes. No, oh, you're. Oh, 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 there's the window. There we go. Look at that guy. Look at him. Look at him. He's just. Uh, he's. Uh, that's his way. He's taking how many spaces do you yeah, figure? Two like spaces. Two. two spaces. But it's just because he can't park properly. Well, and also the car next to him isn't parked all that well either. Yeah, but I still. Come on. <laughs> come on. Yeah, this is fine. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. This is how we do it, huh? What? This is how we do it. It's always good. Yeah, this is... This yeah, hello, Ryan. I'm assuming you're Ryan. Ryan, Ryan. Uh, Diet Coke? Diet Coke for me too, please. You're just gonna have lots of ginger, is that what it is? Yeah, I love ginger. They have all kinds of stuff here. And it just goes on and on and on. Sushi you can eat. Yep. Okay. 
Here's what I got. I'm eating sushi. I haven't done this in a long time. We're, we're talking about the school across the street where you went to school here, right? Yes, I did. And uh, the, that... Uh, I was in that room when Kennedy died. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. And everybody starts getting ready here for their kids to get out. And these people are here really early. Yeah. 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 And this is your mansion. So to speak. Yeah, well, you know, if, if he ever moves out, they'll tear it down and put in a mini mansion. What? No, I just noticed on the, uh, that little, yeah, above the window. Ah, the whole pride of home ownership. Yeah. <clears throat> And there's the brick nobody understands. <laughs> Why is the brick there? It just ended up there one day, and now whenever my contractor comes, he goes, Why do you have a brick there? It's like, I don't know. I just like it. This is the home of Vitaphone Talking Pictures here. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you get that? A friend of mine sells them. Oh. I have like six more in the house somewhere. I can't remember yeah. where to put them. We have to say that your your house. Hold on a second. Let me uh, get through the door here. We always come in through the kitchen. And literally, your house is a. Uh, is 19, a 1940s. No, but it's a museum. No. Yeah. Uh, like comic books a lot. Look at this, folks. Of course, you loved uh, Doc Savage, right? Oh, yeah. I, I always thought Doc Savage was pretty terrific. This is the actual real original Captain Marvel. That's the Captain Marvel I remember. Yeah, well, that's a, um, you know, C.C. Beck. Yeah. More. Hmm? No, I said it was a C.C. Beck. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I had both lights on. Oh, already. here's you as Superman. Yeah, Alex Ross did that. <laughs> Who's Alex Ross? One of the best comic book artists in the world. Really? And you did play Superman, as a matter of fact, on... Uh, yeah? Uh, um, didn't you play Superman on Letterman? I don't think so. I thought you played Superman on Letterman. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. who'd you play? You played somebody. I don't know. And more stuff. I mean, these are... What are these? These are the actual drawings they do before they put them in the, co in the, in the newspaper. Well, the one on top was the... Um, when they were getting George Wonder, that's one of his test strips. He yeah. never. Yeah. When he was replacing Milton Kniff. And this is Little Abner. Yeah. And Winnie Winkle. Yes, the bird winner. And look at this. This is the. Uh, this could be the opening to a DC movie. <laughs> wow. He is quite the collector, folks. This is this is not this is not a. Uh, this is not a, a guy who, who fucks around. I mean, this is... And, and you you say this stuff isn't worth anything today? No, oh, it's worth something. George Burns. That was in the free box. <laughs> the Flash. Wow. Yeah. Of course, the typical Superman, like this was the original DC. Well, that's an Alex Ross. Yeah, but it's it's a well, it's homage a cover, to it's the a cover original. Of Action Comics number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, and signed by the by Alex Ross. By Alex Ross. Yeah. And uh, then more. And this uh, is more yeah. Alex Ross stuff and things. Wow. Jeez, Almighty. And this stuff you say is not stuff you would probably wind up selling because. Yeah, why? Why? Yeah. Look at this. Who are all these people? Who are these old guys? My grandfather and his brothers. Oh, really? Yeah. There's uh, Scrooge McDuck. That was done by Carl Barks, right? Yeah. Wow. Jeez. Well, and look, folks, if you go up the stairs, I mean, it's like a fucking museum. Look at this. Look at this. 
But if you turn around, it's every Acme product ever made. Huh? Behind you. Behind me, every Acme product ever made. Roadrunner. <laughs> oh man. And more comics. Who is this? Is Dolores Del Rio. Dolores Del Rio. People who are watching this don't even know who I'm talking about when I say Dolores Del Rio. I do. Scrooge McDuck, Scrooge McDuck. You love Carl Barks, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Carl Bartz was the guy who did the comic books. And until recent years, didn't get a lot of credit, did he? No. No. Well, the last 25, 30 years, yeah. There's the Flash comics. There's, well, of course, there's Wonder Woman. S&M, great. <laughs> wow. Well, folks, oh, here we go. The, who did this one? It was the Warner store years ago. At the Warner store? Yeah. Really? And is it a painting itself? I have no idea. Wow. Anyway, this is, this is and then Shecky's got even more rooms of, more of memorabilia here. And of course, more Doc Savage, Batman. Uh, wow. What a what a uh, what a museum! A of nothing. No, it's a, it's a museum of nothing, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Very cool, Shecky. Thank you for the tour. You're welcome. And this is the uh, room we sit in for most of the afternoon while Shecky lies on his bed. Now, mind you, he doesn't have to use this small room for his bed. He's got a big room in there. But this is the room he grew up in and he feels comfortable with, right? Do you want to hear all the cars coming down Radnor Road hitting those two speed bumps? Right. Ah, uh, God. It's fun getting old with you, Shecky. Yes, it is. Yeah. So this is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is the room where we sit and talk about probably nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. We, 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 we talk about, uh, movies, television shows, and uh, why I think Arrow stinks now. Well, Alex, tell me about the Case of the Curious Bride the other day. Oh, the Case of the Curious Bride was a movie you turned me on to that was shot in San Francisco, and actually outdoors in San Francisco in, what, 1935? 35. 35. And it was a Perry Mason Probably film. Probably late 34, I was The guess. Case of the Curious Bride? Yeah, it was a yeah. Perry Mason film. Yeah. And it was Warren William. Warren William. Good film. Anyway. Margaret Lindsay. So much for the uh, room with Shecky right there. Right which, out today, which takes me about two hours. Who's that bad? No, it's not that bad, but it seems like it. Anyway, thanks for everything, Shaggy. As always, great sushi and great friend. It, it, great sushi, great friend, and uh, we'll do it again sometime soon. Thank yes. you. Maybe Marjorie will come with us. Uh, yes, yes, she wants to. I know. She wants to know why we haven't taken her for sushi. I said because we only went once since we last took her to sushi. I know. Anyway, see you later. Okay, Ben, get home safe. Bye-bye. Ah. And that's it for our trip to uh, uh, to uh, Queens and Jamaica States and Shecky Land. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed our little trip. I'm trying to get to the front of the train. because the front of the train is where I need to be to get off at Rockefeller Center. <sighs> Gee, I couldn't run like that before. Here we go. Actually, if I take a seat right here, well,
we go. And we're on our way back to the city. I uh, got on the wrong train. <laughs> yeah. The other one took off first. Well, oh well. D train, but I can't take the D train because it doesn't stop at 116th Street. I have to take uh, the B train, which should be coming along soon. Here comes the B now. It's got to be the B train because that was just the D train and they're never that close together. How do you know it's another D? This bullshit. Nobody, of course, will give an old man their seat. Hmm. One more stop, and we're back home, right where we started at 116th Street. and we're home and we are home hope you enjoyed the trip out to Queens yeah yeah that's uh, that was what I used to do on Saturdays that was like the complete trip right uh, and that's what we that's what I uh, what I did how I got out there and hung out with Shecky and that that was a typical Saturday for us it's not thrilling somewhat on the boring side if you want to be very honest about it but uh, you know it's terrific it was terrific and that that reminds me the most of what I did with Shecky and uh, the kind of life that we we led together and uh, I just I don't know it just I just thought I'd play it for you. Whether you liked it or not, I don't know. But uh, uh, it gave you an idea of the kind of life he led in that home in Queens. Anyway, let me uh, let me bring this uh, bring, bring some people in here. Uh, we've got Kevin, and we've got Josh Wheeler, and we've got Alan, and we've got uh, Brian Neary. Uh, and uh, Brian, are you there? There you go. Okay, there he is. How are you all this evening? Okay. Huh? I'm doing good. You're doing good? Okay, all right. And, uh, yeah, so that was my kind of a Saturday that I would spend with Shecky, you know. I missed most of that. Well, you, please, you can go. Please tell me it's recorded. What? I missed most of it. Please tell me it's recorded. Oh, whoops, I didn't record it. Oh, wow. Well. And the the other thing is, I hope this is not because of bad news with Shecky. Oh, you haven't read my, gone to my web page, my Facebook page. He died last night. Oh Jesus! Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't have Facebook anymore. But that's beside the point. Okay. Well, you don't have to have Facebook to go to Facebook. To the page. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. So. Uh, that's, uh, that's the sum total of it, you know, uh, uh, Kevin was with us earlier today when we did the, uh, the tribute to him, uh, and with a bunch of people who really loved him, you know, they spent Mondays with him. You, you know them too, right, Brian? I mean, you, yep. you've hung out there yep. and, uh, they all, they all knew and loved Shecky. 
so that was it. You know, I'm exhausted to tell you the truth. I mean, emotionally. Uh, I mean, I knew it was coming, and last night I would have told you more, but I didn't want to, you know, jump ahead, as it were. Um, At least you got to see him the other day. If you turn your microphone down, it's just blasting. Just and, uh, they all, they and Alex, it's just you on the YouTube. Oh, okay. I did this last night, you know. Which, I know. Uh, I, yeah, after you switched over to the picture or something, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, uh, thank, thank you for reminding me. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about not doing the show anymore just because I can't do it anymore. I mean, last night I, for like a half hour, it was just me, you know? <laughs> so thank you for telling me that. I You're welcome. appreciate it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, you know, so I didn't want to talk, I didn't want to mention it last night, but there were a lot of hints that, uh, the end was near. Uh, there was a message we got on, on this text thread that said if anybody's planning on coming down today or tonight don't come down mm-hmm. and we figured that i figured that probably they gotten a hold of the family which they were asking to do in uh-huh. in colorado and the the family uh, said uh, you know unplug him and if he can live he can live and if he doesn't live he you know you, you're gonna have him plugged in forever and they said they you know and so that's why i think they didn't want anybody going down there uh and, um, you know, uh, so uh, I knew the end was near last night, but I didn't I didn't say that. You know. He probably had a medical DNR. Do not resuscitate. No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't. No. Why do you always assume things? Well, because most people have it. I don't. That way you don't get heroic efforts involved in something. I, I, I have a, 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 a heroic effort, R, or whatever you okay. want to call it. Okay. Do yeah. all you can. Yeah, do all, all, do all you can. <clears throat> D-Y-A-C. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Right, I have a D-Y-A-C. Do all you can. You know, Dude. if you can, t- pick me up on your shoulders and walk me around the room even though I don't know where I am. You know, right. That kind of thing. Yeah. Give me some encouragement to keep going. You have to, my my grandfather, he I, I took care of him last couple of years of his life and then just one weekend he got really sick and then on that night he was coughing and I, I got him from the bathroom because he went to the bathroom and brought him down to the living room and light him down. Then the ambulance came and they 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 said we can resuscitate him but he'll be a vegetable. And he and I, he was in his 80s, and he and I talked about it, and he said, I never want to be like that, so if that happens, just let me go. So. Oh, I definitely want to be a vegetable. Mm. Uh, I, I will, uh, or any fruit or berry that you, you have available, you know. Uh, I, 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 I want, as I've told Marjorie so many times, if, uh, if I'm in that kind of situation, just keep me going, because I want to be as big a burden to everybody around me as is humanly possible. Well, she'll just roll you up in front of the in your office there, and just click on the camera for an hour, and we just stare at you. Well, that, that, that's your way of getting back at the insurance company. That's right? right. That's right. You got it. They're going to have to pay for pay as for long that as damn I insurance. Need. You're going to get your money's worth exactly. out of it. Exactly. I hear you. Of course, I'm going to have to tell Marjorie. Please make the payments. You know, uh, otherwise they will not resuscitate. You know. So. Sure, they will. They have to. They have to. Yeah. They have to. Yeah. I, you know, I, uh, God, I wonder how much money that costs for what he just went through. I mean, only to, of course, die. But then I, because the reason I ask is not so much because I wonder what it costs, but there are people in this world who just don't have health insurance, you know, and, 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 uh, this could break any family just having a member of their family die. Well. Thanks to Obama. A family member sick will break you. Huh? Yeah. What? Just having a family member sick will break you. Oh, that too. But I'm saying that this, I mean, come on. I can't believe this was many, many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sure. Well, you know, it's like I was saying earlier today, with with someone that has ALS, mm-hmm. that's a slow, slow death. And that costs hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousand dollars every six months it's very sad and, and you it's know what you know what it, you know what it amounts to like i have pretty good insurance all the way around i have insurance that uh, i don't pay a penny 
you know, and I have I have Medicare, and then I have the twenty percent is taken care of by this pretty good system that I bought. But, but if you don't have that, what kind of are you going to get the best care possible? No, you know. I mean, the the thing that bothered me about him being at Bellevue is I'm not that aware of the you know that hospital and its reputation, but you don't hear much about it, you know. Only in jokes about, I had a girlfriend, she was in Bellevue psych ward, you know, things like that. So, I mean, I wonder if we'd send him to Mount Sinai, if he might be still be alive right now. I don't know, you know. I, I don't think so. I think anybody that works in a hospital, no matter what, they're still going to, in oh. most cases, those people care. Well, no, oh, these people they were absolutely, these they people care. were all over him. And, yeah. you know, usually I'm not a member of the family. But if I asked them a question, how's he doing? They would give me an honest answer. They, right. they had all the information I needed there. Well, his vitals aren't good, but this is perking up. His heart is a little better today. You know, blood pressure is better, whatever. And they were very nice to us, anybody yeah. that walked in the door. So, I mean. I don't think you have to worry about that part of it. I, mean, I know, but, you know, I still wonder. I know, you wonder. You know, uh, I, I mean. uh even if you were in the best Mayo Clinic or whatever, you'd still wonder, what if this guy worked on him? What if this guy worked on him? Yeah. What if we got him here? What if we got him there? But you're never gonna, you're never gonna answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're fortunate in this country, in most states, not all, but most. If you are really sick, and you go to the ER, mm -hmm. no insurance company, your doctor doesn't have to say, well, I think you ought to have this treatment uh -huh. or these drugs. They have to approve it, insurance companies, state law. Have to improve, approve what? Uh, the treatment that the emergency room physician says needs to be right. done. So. Well, no, they go to the insurance and say, is it covered? Yeah. Not in the ER. ER has to do it and they have to take it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. That's the ER. Yep. That's yeah, right. I went to the ER. I don't know that I would ever do that again. Uh, because they, I think they over tested me, you know, I mean, I had three separate CT scans, you know, and they wanted to see if you would glow. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's another reason why they don't worry about it. Well, I know I don't have any, can I know I don't have any cancer in my body. And I mean, they were doing everything that they could possibly do. Uh, and, uh, not that I don't appreciate it, but I think overdoing it is also too much. I was in there for like 10 hours. Well, sure. And all I did was, you know, hit my head on the sink, you know, and fall to the ground. Yeah, covering their ass. Yeah, of course. That's right. Of course. At, at your age, they want to make sure they cover all the bases. Well, it's, they, they're, 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 they're practicing, uh, you know, uh, defensive medicine. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, and I, like, I had this doctor, my neurologist, he went and got me, gave me a blood test I didn't want. Okay, I never asked for he, I, he said he was going to give me a blood test for a certain something. Um, what is that chattering again tonight? Uh, a certain amount of, you know, uh, stuff. And uh, uh, he, he, but he gave me a test that I didn't ask him to give. He I said, could, could I take this test? Can I take your blood? I want to do this test. I said, go ahead. Then he also did another test. And this one was off a little bit off. It was a little high. So he's like, I got to send you to a, a hematologist oncologist. Well, why? I mean, you know, I mean, you're just covering your ass. That's all you're doing. And so I, I went to this doctor, this hematologist oncologist. What was it? Two weeks ago, he drew, took out eight vials of blood, four, six vials of blood. All right, about that size. All right, you know the size of them. And uh, they sent that all out, and he said, "I'll get back to you with the uh, with the uh, you know with the results." Well, that was two weeks ago. I think they've done every blood test they could possibly do by now. You know, maybe they, maybe they needed the blood for the guy's cat that was anemic or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could have been something like that, but you know. So I mean, I, and and I've yet to hear back from him. You know, uh, and I'm not. Marjorie says, "Well, you can always call him," and I went. No, his job is to call me, and I want to see how long it takes him to get a hold of me. You know, uh, but I mean, I uh, how many blood tests? I, how, how much blood? He drew all that blood. How many different tests? Does it take two weeks to get a blood test back? Yeah. 
It does. Some Sometimes. in some areas of the country. This is New York City. Yeah, you some get, some tests take a couple of weeks to get the results back. Yeah. Certain tests, yeah. But not more than two weeks. Oh, I've had them in my area take two weeks. Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? Hmm. And it depends on what lab they're sending them to and how busy they are and everything else. Yeah, well, here in New York, usually and blood tests that? are pr done pretty fast. You know, I mean, uh, every blood test I've ever had, I got the blood back the next day. A lot of blood cultures, like Kevin says, can take up to two weeks mm. um, to do different analysis. Well, it's over two weeks now. And you still don't have an answer? No. Been two don't weeks since two two, two weeks today since I had my you know I, I, I was there, I should have heard something by now, shouldn't I? Yeah, I'd call him on Monday. No, no, his job is to call me, not me to call him. You know, it, 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 it'd be Fine. lovely. You call him, say, oh, we lost your blood. Could you come back? Well, don't you think he'd call me about that? You know, you would think so. Well, the good thing is if it wasn't. If there was nothing bad, probably the, one of the reasons they didn't call you. That's right. Something that know. threw up some kind of flag, they would have called you. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure I have a few things a little bad. My platelets are low and so on. There are things he could attend to. but yeah, Nothing real important, maybe. Yeah, could be. Could be that's the reason why. But that's no good news on that shit. But by two yeah. weeks, I should have gotten him back, calling me back about this. You know, here in New York. You're worrying, the, Alex. Don't worry. Yeah, well. You know, yeah, you know. I worry all the time. Got enough to worry about. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mean, it just it just pisses that pisses me off. Yeah, you know? I know. He said, "We'll get back to you when we get the blood test back." And you know, here we are, two weeks later, and then we haven't. Uh, no. You know. But uh, did that to me with my PSAs, you know, and you're going, oh, okay, you're gonna fucking tell me or what with the biopsies and all that. Wait a minute, PSAs you get the next not, day not here. Not PSA, the biopsies. Oh, the biopsies. Yeah, I'm sitting there. You know, oh, we'll let you know. No, he okay. did. He did a biopsy on me, a urologist, right? And we had the results the next day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, they said you know they said we'll let you know in a you know few days, and it's a week later, and I'm going okay. Well, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing. Well, no where big... where you are, the things might be a little slower because you might not have the same labs or the lab might be further away you know things well, like that monterey it shouldn't be that bad no it shouldn't but it is you know but i uh you know hospital monterey, they got all Bio the big stars the down there they take the sample they send it to pathology and they look at it under a microscope yep <clears throat> yeah Very maybe it was a big day for buttholes that day i don't know maybe. <laughs> yeah 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 and, and it came back everything was fine right yeah. Yeah. So you had to go through a biopsy for nothing. It's just the waiting. Yeah. Well, you know, my my doctor was a very good urologist. What I love about him is he said to me when I first went there, he said, "Well, you know, we could do we could do a biopsy." He said, "I'd make 400 bucks, but I don't I, I don't do that." He said, "I need proof that I need to do a biopsy." And yeah, so he sent my blood out. Point. He sent my blood out for a special <laughs> test. And it said, there's a good chance you may have prostate cancer. So let's now do a biopsy. But he didn't just jump into it, you know? Yeah. This is the first one. It was probably, what, 10 years ago or whatever. And it was the first time the C word was ever mentioned to me. So you sit out, on, I go in and do the biopsy. Then I go sit on the coast and stare at the ocean and go, am I going to die? Oh, but yeah. I won't oh, go yeah. for a week. Well, I, I hate that, you know, when they say, or oh, sending you to an oncologist. Well, that doesn't mean you have they didn't cancer. Do that. They just said, call me in a week or whatever, two yeah. days, whatever the hell it was. And you just sit there and think about it the whole time. Oh, yeah, I've gone through that. And I've, I've, uh, I've said, well, you know, if I get through this, I'll do this. I'll be better at this. I'll be a better Hello? person in this way or that way, you know. And uh, with this thing, I'm the same way. You know, I may have some kind of little blood cancer or whatever, which they can take care of fairly simply. I don't uh, think so. Huh? I think they would have. I think they would have contacted you by now. Uh, I, I think he would have too, but you know, who knows? Like last time, right? Last time, same type of situation happened. They didn't contact you right away, right? They no. Said, if, some, if something was, they would contact you. No, I, I never had that before. You know, where the guy didn't get back to me within a certain amount of time. I have a urologist pretty much gets back to me within two days, three days. 
Mm-hmm. You know, and that's always a blood test. And when my uh, when my uh, uh, doctor takes a blood test, he gets it back the next day. You know. Now, yeah, there are blood tests that take longer. That I agree with you, but they shouldn't take this long. Not in New York City. So what they do is they keep it for a, you know, put it in a petri dish or something. Keep it and see if anything grows in it. And that can take three or four or five or seven days for for blood. For urine, it's about three days. Yeah, well, we're 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 talking about we're talking about two weeks here. I, I understand. Yeah. I would be pissed. I'd be calling them and say, what the hell happened? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, maybe it could be he got him back. At the, he didn't see anything, and uh, he wasn't in any great rush to get a hold of me, you know, because he had other people who had to be called, you know. So I don't know. Yeah, screw it. I lost my best friend, and that's, that's pissing me off, you know. Yeah. There's a part of me that gets very resentful to Rick in saying, why didn't you, God damn it, why didn't you take better care of yourself? This part of me that goes, God damn it, why didn't I see the signs of it? You know, the last time I saw him, he was very weak. He was walking like a, like an old man. not like. And I know what an old man walks like. All I have to do is walk past the mirror, you know. But, I mean, he, he, uh, he was not looking well. And, uh, but I didn't, you know, it's the kind of thing you don't push with somebody because they'll, they'll push back against you. You know, and if, if he wanted to talk, he talked, you know. And he told me a lot, a lot about what doctors were saying and so on. But I don't know that he was telling me everything, you know. And that he wasn't in some kind of state of denial. Uh, or just wanting to, you know. As I say, there, there were certain signs that I saw that said to me that he, that I should have seen it, something was wrong, because for the longest time I've talked to him about making out a will because he had a lot of money and I said you know you can't have that kind of money and not have a will you know because if you die uh, even though you haven't got that many people to leave it to I said uh, it's going to go into probate lawyers are going to get the money the state of New York is going to get the money and and you're just going to be you know robbed you got to have a will so he said okay well you know I'll, I'll go do that I'll have a will and he did it uh just a couple of weeks ago, he got it back, and he said, "I, I made the will, and it's uh, it's uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. It's sitting in a drawer here, and uh, I I did it, and I went good, you know, and I was happy that he did it uh, because he it was something that for I guess a year, two years, I had been bugging him about." Uh, and he always kept saying, well, next week I'm going to go see the lawyer. Well, all of a sudden he went to see the lawyer, and I think he knew something. I think a doctor somewhere told him something, you know, that I didn't know. But this is just so shocking, you know, just absolutely shocking to me. It was the last thing I expected because I was talking to him two week, a week ago, a little over a week ago. Some people don't want to depress their, their friends. Well, that... That could be. I don't know that that was the reason. I think he was just very guarded about a lot of stuff, you know, and in denial about a lot of stuff, too. I mean, you know, do you want to say, hey, I should have taken better care of myself, and I didn't? No, you don't, you know. But it's very surprising to me, and, uh, and I also fault a bit the doctors that he went to see about this passing out and things like that uh, because uh, they... Um, uh, they should have known better. You know, they should have just seen some signs there uh, and, and looking at his history as to what they could do, but they, they didn't do it, so, you know. But it's uh, it's uh, strange, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I just, it, it, it's a shock to me because, you know, a week ago I had a friend and today I don't. And uh, No, that's wrong. Yes, yeah, wrong. You still have a friend. Oh, yeah. You still have a friend. Who? Shecky. Don't say you don't have a friend. Well, yeah, yeah. That's a nice way of putting it, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just, just I can't. Not there. You can talk to him every day, Alex. I guess That's you're. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, I get. You know, you're very wise. Uh, you're very wise, Kevin. The way I look at it. Yeah. I talk to my buddy all the time. Really? Yep. Hmm. And I don't deny it. I did talk to him last, you know, uh, today yeah. at some point. I did talk to him. 
He'll talk to you in different ways, too. Watch. Yeah. 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 If I die, I'm not friends with any of you. Well, I don't, we don't want you to be. You too. Yeah. <laughs> you'll probably you'll probably get a door handle in the mail, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> from the car. <laughs> that was the car, by the way, in that video. Uh, when the door handle was still working. Yeah, I made that comment on the chat when we were watching it. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it's it, not it, working. <laughs> in case people I, don't know the story about the the handle. There's a handle on the outside, there's a handle on the inside, and I opened up the handle on the inside to get out of the car, and it broke off in my hand. Now, this car is 27 years old, and certainly th there's a good chance that that door handle was fatigued, okay, and it broke. So now we're trying to figure out how the hell do we get out of the car. So Shaky says, oh, I'll just get out and open the door for you. So he gets out and opens the door for me. And then I talk to him, and I, I call him after it's uh, after I get back to Manhattan, and I say, I'm really sorry about the door handle. You know, I'll, I'll pay to have it fixed, although it, I don't think it's really my fault. It's really just the age of the car. And he said, oh, no, don't worry about it. He says, uh, you know, I'll just get out and open the door for people. And then I hung up with him, and I thought about it, and I went, wait a minute, there's an easier way to solve this problem. You just roll down the window and pull on the outside handle. And Shecky thought that was brilliant, and he was so happy now that friends, he didn't have to get up and, you know, go outside and act like a chauffeur and open the door for them. So Yeah, with my luck, the window would get stuck down. Well, that, uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, we didn't get to that point, you know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I just think about all the, you know, when I started thinking about my whole life with Shecky, I mean, all the things we've done together, and the and the you know he was there from my uh, right after I married Marjorie, and he was there uh, uh, early on in San Francisco when when Letterman came out to San Francisco to do his shows, uh, he was uh, uh, he was hanging out with me and staying at my place you know, and it was just uh, it just all these little hallmarks uh, him being at the comedy competition in San Francisco with me, and us driving across the country. And it was just, uh, we've just had a, you know, pretty good life together. You know, and I, I wasn't his only friend, uh, but he was mine. No, he, I, he wasn't my only friend. Or his, uh, I wasn't his only friend, but uh, I certainly felt like I was very special to him. And uh, that, and I, I hope I made him feel the same way, you know. So, but I think there's something special about the fact of at least 45 years as friends. And that's, uh, that's uh, you know, how many people do we know that long, you know? Unless they were some high school chums. So, anyway. Uh, it's, it's funny that I spent... I had a good time watching the, uh, the uh, Letterman memorial they put on YouTube there. That was really good. Yeah, that's some, some dumb, was done by a guy by the name of Don Geller. Yeah. Uh, Geller? Geller. A bunch of yeah. those I, I yeah. remember now, and yeah. I started watching them. I'm going, oh, crap, I remember that, and I remember that. It was funny because you could see, you know, Shecky was, his his smile was hidden all the time. He was, he was always trying to not laugh when he was not supposed to, you know? Right, right. Well, you know, he like had the old he, Carol Burnett ones when they were doing their skits, they couldn't laugh, but you could see they were trying hard as hell not to laugh. Yeah. Well, I mean, Shecky, uh, he, you know, he was Elvis for the uh, for the yeah, Letterman him and, show. Him and Biff were working together. And, but he did, did a lot of other things for him too. Yeah. Naked at a Xerox machine. Yeah, he got his dick caught in a Xerox machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The fax machine, rather. But what's funny oh. about Shecky is Shecky was maybe the worst actor ever. I mean, he just... Right, and that was the best part about it. And that was yeah. what Letterman loved. You know, Letterman right. loved... He loved uh, Calvert DeForest. He did... Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, was uh, the guy, you know... The, huh, what's the name of the character he was playing? Yeah. Um, uh, you know. The short guy? Huh? The short guy? The, 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 you know, he was kind of the... Oh, God. I see. I'm so out of it that I can't remember these things. I, he was, uh, 
But anyway, uh, Calvert DeForest, they, they loved him because Calvert couldn't get a line out straight. If he, if he couldn't see it written in front of him, he couldn't say it. And then sometimes they'd move it too far back and he couldn't see the writing and he'd get it all wrong. And it was just, that's why they loved him. You know, uh, they loved the show being amateur night. You know, and that was the, the late show especially was uh, late, you Larry know, the Bud night. Melman. Huh? But Larry yeah. Bud Melman. That's what Tyson brought up. Them. They had yeah. to get rid of that name when he went to uh, CBS because that was intellectual property of NBC. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. Like they're going to use that again. Well, it's funny. My friend uh, Steve Weiner, it, you know, it's interesting. Let me just mention this quickly while I still remember it. Steve Weiner was with me on Wednesday when I was there. And Steve Weiner is the guy who introduced me to Shecky. And he's the guy that got Shecky the job at the Letterman Show. And after the first year, he and his writing partner got fired. And Recky, Shecky stayed there for the next 33 years. You know. And uh, so it was. It was. Uh, it was fitting that the two of us were spending our last time with Shecky together, because he was the guy who introduced me to Shecky. Uh, now, where was I going with the rest of it? I don't know. I'm I'm loopy tonight. This is the second show I've done today, so you know. But I'm glad you guys all showed up. You know who's not here? Tony has nothing to say. Yeah, I was surprised. I thought he would call. Uh, yeah, Tony. Tony, Tony called me in the morning, and yeah, he's really upset. So. Yeah, but I mean, uh, he could he could call, you know. Yeah. It, you know he, it he's be. very emotional kind of guy too. So. Yeah. 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 But. Uh, He'll call if he feels like it. Yeah, yeah. So it's been it's been a it's been a rough day today, uh, but I've heard from a lot of people. Uh, Josh, you sent me a note. Very nice. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, no Kevin problem. Kevin was there earlier today uh, when we did our, our little tribute. It was kind of a flash pop-up show, you know. Uh, I don't know if that's redundant or not. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've heard from a lot of people that I haven't heard from in 20 years, 25 years, uh, who want to get in contact with me again. So, you know, it... it what this does, something like this makes you want to see friends, you know. And Do you think and, all those calls? What? Do you think the calls from the friends that you haven't seen in 25 years are genuine, or do they do they see that maybe Alex Bennett is going to be getting a big inheritance and they want to hit you up for it or something? <laughs> I don't know. It just seems Was that weird. meant to be funny? No, not at all. No, it's meant to be no, serious. No, no. That why would these people call you? I mean, it's nice to cons console you, but oh, well, what's to say I'm going to get an inheritance? You know, I, I don't know, but you, you know, he, I don't know. What you know, and I, I don't want to it think in those terms. On, <clears throat> huh? People that you don't talk to for a long time realize that people haven't talked to each other for a while. Exactly. And all of a sudden. They yeah. say, you know what, we've got to get in touch with each other. Well, I had this one guy that I had, I had this one guy I had a falling out. That happened to me a lot. Yeah, yeah, that I had a falling out with maybe 25 years ago over something. And we haven't talked to each other. We worked every day. You know, he was one of my one of my cast on my radio show in San Francisco, Chuck Farnham. And uh, I haven't talked to him in 25 years, I think, something like close to that. Because we had a falling out. And today he wrote me and he said, you know, the falling out has been just going on for too long. We really should talk. So we're going to talk on the phone this weekend. So yeah, I remember that for him. Yeah. So it, bring, it brings people together, you know. But he stuck his hand down his pants and his butt crack and then shake somebody's hand. I well, what that. we did, yeah, that was a very tasteful thing we did. I, don't, don't, don't deny how wonderful that was. Uh, I'm just trying to remember uh, who uh, the... Uh, uh, the uh, I'm trying to remember who it was now. Yeah, who did he do that to? What he it did? Like he did to well, there was a there was a thing in a in a movie. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of the movie where uh, it was called stink palming, and what you do is you run your hand in the crack of your butt, and then shake hands with people. And I, <laughs> and I'm trying to remember 
exactly who the who the, it was a, it was like a it was like a either oh, was, it, was it a first lady I think he did it to politician or something yeah something it was a first like, lady yeah. and he went down yeah. to meet her at the airport and yeah. I think in uh, in San Jose and he uh, but he stink palmed her and two yeah. days later she had E. coli in her intestines and we're trying to figure out why yeah right oh, but it was I yeah, I think I, 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 I worked. I was at work when you guys were talking about that, and we used to have the radio on, and we had to turn it down a little bit lower. I, I think I got a, a lot of lot of really nasty mail over that. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. hilarious. Arnim was the one, yeah. Yeah, and uh, then we did a we did a thing with him uh, where he took a, a blow up doll, and uh, he went. Uh, 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 Daniel Steele, you know who she is, the yeah horrible writer but anyway she bought the, she had this big mansion it was the old Spreckles mansion I think it was called in San Francisco and it was and right across the street there was a park so we went out we went, we had him go out to the park with the blow-up doll and he kind of stripped naked and then I read uh, I read uh, uh, passages from one of her books and he acted them out with the with the doll well, she wound up trying to sue us <laughs> for doing that. It was just, it, it was a lot of fun. He was a lot of fun. But I keep getting all this, this kind of this squeaky noise back here, and I don't understand it, but, you know, I'll live with it. Anyway, uh, hello, to, uh, hello to Tony, and hello to Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Good to Hola. see you, my friend. Um, you know, but I mean, I I think when things like this happen, you have a tendency to to like have, call a friend and say, hey, you know, just wanted to say hi. You know, I just wanted to let you know. I haven't talked to you in a while. I want to do it. Bobby Slayton called me tonight. You oh know? wow! Yeah, and I I don't talk to him a lot because I'm 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 kind of shy in a way. You know, it's it's kind of hard for me to make those calls. I should make them more often, but I don't. And it's a certain I don't like. I guess I'd like to think of it. Somebody once said I like to think that I was shy, <laughs> you know, and and so uh, sometimes I just don't talk to people that I should be talking to, you know, because who knows how much time I have left here? But also, who knows how much time they have left here? I mean, I figured Shecky would be speaking at my funeral, you know. So you never know, right, Jeff? Yep. Every day's a good day. Well, you know that more than anybody because you had a stroke, and uh, when you come back from one of those things, you go, "I better enjoy this life while I got it." Oh. You know. I spent the I spent the year learning how to talk again. Yeah. And I'm still working on it. You're still working on it. You, you've done Sounds pretty. Sounds pretty good to me. You've done pretty good. He can't read, though. You still have a reading problem, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Not much. Yeah. You never. That's what Mary Pam for to read to him. Well, you know something. What happens? What happens? Put a lot of stuff on audio. Yeah. What happens is, is that uh, strokes are especially vicious because you, everybody has a stroke and everybody has different uh, different outcomes on it. That's right. You know, like my, I talked to Will Durst. He's still in the hospital. He's still in the right. nursing home. He uh, he still can't hasn't got the use of a leg. His arm has come back, but his leg yeah. hasn't. So, you never know. You never know. You know. Yeah, and I'm light. One clot in the brain. Yeah, and I get lightheaded a lot lately. You know, I <laughs> think it has to do with my medication, but you know, who knows? It could be something. How you doing, Tony? i so, It's a hard day. I was emotional, up and down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because I was just shocked, really. You know, but you know, uh, I got a a funny story if I could tell you, Alex. Sure. One of the uh, I was remembering back one time. One time I was getting ready to leave Shecky's, and the phone rang, and he had one of the old phones that my mom had still. You know the, uh, oh, yeah, the old yeah. ones that you pick up. Yeah. And his machine went. Says, oh, that's Alex. It says you want to get it. He says he goes. I'll never forget this at all. I call him later. He says, and he says he's probably going to complain about one of his chronic conditions, and I'll be on the phone for an hour. <laughs> he said, you know what he said? I'll never forget this. I was crying and laughing today. He goes, he's going to outlive everybody. He says, come on, I'll take you to the subway station. <laughs> and I started crying that I started living because I was trying to remember, like, and I got to thank you for introducing me because once of you, I never would have been friends with him. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was so sad today. I was thinking of my mom and my dad. I went to the cemetery and I put a flower down. And I was thinking of Shecky. I said, you know what? I hope he runs into my mother if there's an afterlife. She's probably going to say, I told you he's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it was, I, was, I felt so bad, though. You know, I mean, he was such a great guy. I like, get, to me, it was like the big brother I always wanted, like. And you were the little brother he never wanted. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it when was you... like, you know, I was always enamored. Like, he knew everything. I was just, like, fascinated by it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, you know, all the comics and the stories he would tell me. I was like, this is great. So you can go home now. I had enough. I used to look at the clock. Should I leave now? He says, yeah, it's about that time. Don't give people the idea that every time I called him, it was because I was complaining about my health. No, 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 no. Yeah. It was just that one time. You know how you think of funny things? I was trying to think of, I remember the first time I went over. Oh, that was a fun. Then I started laughing because he said that. And he said it lovingly. I said, oh, that's kind of funny. I said, I'll talk to him. He did say it lovingly, I hope. Yeah, he did. He he thought so. We thought so highly of you, Alex. And you know what he used to tell me? That's Alex's room. If I got to put him up the big room. Yeah, well, no, he got a nice to, room. He used, to, he used to refer to that room, the big room, the one he wants, yes. wouldn't sleep in. Right? He he slept in that bed, in that small room. That's all, a of, it, was all, of, room, yeah. all of his life. That's the bed room he grew up in. The That's room, crazy. the big room, was his parents' room. And when his mother died, he kept referring to that room as my room. Yeah, he did. He I woke up Alex has got a nice room. He, yeah. in he here. says, I've got, I got a new computer. I'm putting it in your room. And I'm going, yeah, yeah. yeah the computer room. To begin crazy. with, you're saying my room is the room your mother died in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I slept room. over there when he still had a bed there, and it was the bed his mother died in. Right. And I would go sleep in it. And I'm going, oh. this is, you know, this is creepy, <laughs> you know. Uh, but he didn't. He didn't ever want to move into that room. He claimed that the you know the noise from the street he could hear from there. That's yeah. like where I live in Queens, Alex. I can't live in the front. I can't sleep exactly. in the front of that's, the house. That's what he they did. The bed that oh, bedroom. I used, to, I, I used to put basically. the radio on when my room was as a kid, just well, drown out the cars. Well, that faced Radnor Road, you know, and yeah. he, he and just didn't want it. Great. He just didn't want to have anything to do with it. Uh, but uh, right. you know, yeah. Uh, and I was trying to laugh, so I was thinking about all the different I, things. I remember a period of time when Shecky's mother was very sick. She had whatever she had. I can't remember now. And he took care of her, like almost like you did with your mother. I mean, yeah, that was he, the hardest thing was, I had to he do. He was literally, was you know, wiping her ass and doing everything yeah. that they, she had to do in order to take care of her. He was acting like a nurse. And... It, it, quite, then one day he called me, he said, my mother died. And I said to him, well, I hate to say this, but I'm happy for you. I said, because you've had to go through this for the last, wow. you know, he didn't have a life for two, three years while he was taking care of his mother. And I yeah. always thought that was wonderful of him. You know, I always thought that was wonderful. <laughs> uh, but I, I felt very bad for him because he really had no life at that point. Yeah. It's hard because he was telling me like, I never really got a full effect because he was telling me one time like that, like he was saying, like when I was taking her of my mom, he said it once, I would have had to get a nurse, Alex, if my mom lived long enough, we would get a nurse at night. Because even he said, you got to be able to get sleep. And I couldn't sleep anymore the last six months because she was always waking me up. Yeah, well, he, he, you know, he should have taken his own advice because he he took, he literally took care of her. I mean, yeah, that was a, a lot of work. I don't yeah. think there was a nurse in the house. I don't think so. I think yeah. he told me maybe when he went when he went to work, he had to have the lady there, of course. But he was up all night and then going to work in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it was a rough time for him. I was hard. I don't know. How and did. every every week when I would call him, he would talk about. It. He says, "Well, she's not getting any better," you know. And I, I'm thinking to myself privately, I just hope she dies soon because it, 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 the way it's affecting Shecky, you know. What, what, bot, what gets me is that we are responsible for the people around us, you know, in that uh, if you don't take care of yourself and then you die like Shecky died, uh, a whole bunch of people are going to be impacted by it, you know. So take better care of yourself, you know. Yeah. You know what it is, I think, Alex? I think you might have said it a while ago. Old age creeps up on us and we don't realize it. Because in our mind, oh, we believe still think, me, I realize it. You know? I'm, I'm starting to see it now, too, since I'm just going through change. You know what it is? How like old are you? How old are you? 53, I'll be 54. S shut the fuck up, okay? You know, <laughs> yeah, he's yelling at, I like when you yell at me. It makes me feel, put me in my place a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I mean, I I think you're right. I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah. 
But, you know, I mean... Um, it, it, it hits you in different ways, though. It does, I've yeah. lost about, I want to say, five or six friends in the last yeah, two or three years to death, and they, they should have been riding right along with me, and they're gone. Yeah, yeah. Close, close friends. One of my best friends. Well, I, you know, somebody says, what's the worst thing about being 83? And it's, it's not my health, which, you know, yeah, you're walking a little slower and I get lightheaded from the drug a lot and things like that, you know, and uh, all, all these things should bother me. But the thing that bothers me the most is all the people that die. You know? yeah, because I'm only I'm, 65, 66 years old coming up on it, and I've lost that many people that were that close to me well, that were supposed to be riding around with me when I got old. Forget about just people that are, are uh, uh, younger than you or older than you or whatever. Think about all the, all the movie stars and stuff that you hear of d die. You know? yeah, and the older the you now. get, the more of them die. You know, yeah. most of uh, three quarters, maybe eight, 90 percent of all Hollywood is dead now well, that I used to go to their movies. You know, that's what you hear more and more of every day. L lately, I watch a movie and I go dead, 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 dead. And of course, they should be. The, the film was made in 1950, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the thing is that, that they should be because because of their age. I mean, that's that's what's happening is it. Yeah. That time is rolling around where. Yeah. Nobody lives forever. Yeah, well, I, I came up with a little profound statement today to Marjorie, and I, and I think I wrote it to somebody. And I said, I guess, I guess dying is the biggest event of your life. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, if you don't die, you haven't lived. You it know? only happens once. It only happens once, yeah. And who knows what second, happens? Like I said, the second biggest event. First you're born, then you die. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Although, you know, I, I don't think I was ever appreciative that I came out of my mother's pussy. You know, I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I, I didn't, I, and that oh, always scared me, God. My because I, I, I like to always tell the story that my father said to me when I asked him, because I've always had a fear of death, okay? Morbid fear, fear. I, I wake up every morning worrying about it, okay? And uh, I said to my father, I said, I just don't know if I can conceive of death, you know? And he said, well, a very simple way to conceive of death is you've been there before, That's before true. you were born. And then I went to bed every night and I couldn't go to sleep because I was thinking about what was the life before I was born? Yeah, I want to know, know everything. Yeah. But, you know, you didn't have any, any awareness. Yes, Ray? Well, even when you go to sleep at night and you're not dreaming. Yeah, you're still someplace else. Right? Yeah, yeah, but you wake up in the morning. I know. You but know. at that moment, you might as well not, you might as well be dead. And if you wake up alive, it's a good day. Well, who who knows? You know, I mean, I you know, I I, I my problem is, and I've often said this about people who are religious. I'm jealous, okay, because yeah. they don't have a fear of death because they feel they're going to a better place. They're going to see Uncle Harry and uh, mm -hmm. Cousin Bill, you know, and 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 uh, Shecky, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I, I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I'm not religious. And so I have a fear of death because I live every day with the knowledge that probably what happens to you is absolutely nothing. You know? Yeah, that's good. Well, you know, you don't need to be religious. What happens if you do get to see Shecky when you pass away? Now, there is a scientific part of me, okay, yeah. that believes that, well, maybe... You know, it's not going to be, it, it, there's going to be something scientific that happens. You so know? you think we jump to another, like, plane? Uh, uh, yeah, well, there's that possibility. I mean, we, we you know, I, if I had Charlie here, we could talk about uh, quantum physics and things like that, in which they believe there are other dimensions, in which we live in each of those dimensions, but we live differently in each of those dimensions, but we're well, living simultaneously in those dimensions. And maybe you slip into one of those other dimensions, you know. Oh, who knows? Nobody knows. Nobody's exactly. come back yeah. to tell us, you know. So that could, but you I know mean, what? that could be. I was just watching something yesterday, and it was really compelling. Like because, like an amoeba has its view of the world, which is much different than ours. But ours is limited by our brain. Like we only see what happens in the universe by the brain that we have in this body. So we don't actually know 
like if there's something else going on. Let me just do this. Let me we put my. We can't uh, conceive of it. Oh, there he is. Okay, good. I'm glad it's Don Giller. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, this is Don Giller. This is the guy that posts all the sh all the uh, Letterman stuff. Uh, that isn't Letterman's stuff. And he works for Letterman doing the Letterman stuff, too. Confusing, huh, Don? Hi. It's nice to see you. Yeah. yeah not, not Sorry a good, for your loss. Yeah, not a great day. But, you know, you did a very loving tribute to him. That video is... Hang on. I'm, I'm, there's an echo here. Let me, let me fix that. All the, all the, uh, Just turn off your browser. Yeah. Uh, that isn't Letterman's stuff. And he works for Letterman. Hey, Letterman. Just, just, confusing, huh, Don? Just kill, kill. I'm old. Give, kill your browser. Oh, it's okay now. Now it's fine. No, I can't see. Wait a minute. <laughs> now I can't. Oh, wait. Oh, here we are. Okay. Here we, okay, I'm okay. Okay. Yeah. What I was going to say is that was a very loving tribute you did to him. That was well, I, I appreciate that. I, I thought Walters was spectacular. Huh? Who's? Have you seen Walter Kim's uh, uh, The Letterman Channel's uh, tribute? No, no. Um, uh, I'll, uh, how can you, I'll, I can email you the, uh, you the link. Email me the link, okay. okay? Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was Grace. Um, there are a lot of clips, but it was the stills that did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let me do that now. Okay, well, you know, either that you can, we're going to go off in a couple of minutes anyway, so you could do oh, it then. Perfect timing. Yeah, you could <laughs> do it then. But I How really, we see? if you haven't seen it, just go to YouTube and just put in the words uh, "remembering uh, Shecky," and those those two words will probably put you right to his video. Well, uh, it actually put it'll put you up to the Letterman channel's uh, video as well. Which, yeah, which, well, that which was I would the recommend yeah. over what I did. What well, I did was tiny, minuscule. Uh, uh, yes, yes, but, but 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 weren't you involved in putting that other one together as no, well? Nothing. No, no, well, wasn't. you weren't. Oh, that's well, all Walters. Oh, oh, that's his work. Okay, yeah, it was very lovely. You know, it, 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 what he did was spectacular. And the one you sent me that is just basically it's stills. Yeah, it's just stills because because I wasn't allowed to put up uh, video Dave content videos. I could put up stills, but not videos. Well, how come? Um, except for the Shecky footage, which was public domain, so that was okay. Yeah, but why, uh, why, why, why couldn't you? I mean, don't you put up all those shows anyway? Right. So, uh, it's because of the hire, uh, as, as I mentioned on the on the other thing. Uh, 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 Worldwide Pants hired me as a consultant to the channel, to mm -hmm. to the Dave channel. Yeah. And one of the conditions, uh, actually, I can't say what. I mean, there's a there's an NDA. I can't I yeah. can't okay. say why. Yeah. Uh, I, but I can say that that I'm no longer able uh, to to put up additional content, additional other Dave than the stuff you've content. already put up. Yeah, what's, what's up there is is good, uh, and they're leaving it intact for now. Oh, okay. But I just can't put anything else. So you couldn't take you couldn't take stuff from the stuff that was already up there and then recomposite it as something yeah, else. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's understandable. Well, the yeah. thing the thing that is up there, uh, people should look at it. It's very good. In fact, I have it. I have I, I linked it on my uh, Facebook page so that you can actually. Walter's thing. Yeah. I, okay. Okay. So I, you, you don't. I I don't need to email. No, you. I can click on. You can click on it, on my Facebook page and, and watch it. And what it has is, um, uh, it's terrific. Okay, uh, and and I I loved it. Uh, was that it was. Um, now, what was I going to say? I forgot what I <laughs> you Sometimes I get so involved in what I'm saying that I forget what I'm saying. Um, but it was, okay. it was just really, it was really, you know, it was really, it's really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I suggest that everybody look at it. And, and also, you know, look at a lot of Don's uh, uh, videos, which he'd been doing this for years. You know, how many videos do you figure you got on YouTube? Uh, 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 1,500 about. 1,500. About 1500. Wow. Okay. Although but, I, I think I have that many, oddly enough. <laughs> yeah. Over I the years. Do. I wouldn't I wouldn't deny it. Yeah. Um no, I just I I, I guess I wanted to come on and and real I realized this last night. I'm less sad and more mad. I said that too. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because he didn't take better care of himself. Yeah. 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 This might have been avoidable. We don't know if if it, if it was inevitable or not, but he didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And that just kind of it pissed me off. Well, I think I felt that way when other friends have died for one reason or another because they hadn't taken care of themselves or whatever. And then I go, you know, why couldn't you take better care of yourself? You know, you I, there's a part of you that gets mad because you, you love the person so much that you'd really like to have them around, you know? And, uh, yeah. I think sometimes your, your time is just up. Well, they, that's one way of looking at it. But, uh, you know, time is a matter of how much time is enough. And I think that 67 years isn't enough. Okay. You know? Uh, you should all of you here. I hope you live to be uh, into your eighties. You should, if you take good care of yourself. You know, unless you get something that's just ridiculous. You know, but uh, somebody said, "I wonder how Shecky would have felt knowing that within a twenty-four hour period he died and Robert Blake died." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, he would have had something to say about that. <laughs> but he'd be like, "Couldn't you wait?" <laughs> yeah. But you know how long? And he, he never, he never got to see Psycho. He never got. No, it's right. No, well, he. It's not that he didn't get to see Psycho. He didn't want to see Psycho. Well, he. I, I think you said that 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 would be the last film that he would see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. and it didn't happen. Well, I don't. I don't know if he put it that way to me exactly. Okay. He just said that I wanted to know that after I've seen everything I've wanted to see, I had one picture left to watch. Mm. You know, and that was Psycho. I can't believe he never saw Psycho, though. I was going to eat shit. You think he saw it, Alex? I think he may have. He may have been a a, a secret uh, uh, okay. uh, Psycho watcher, you mm. know. <laughs> but, but whatever. But you know, we'll miss him, and uh, it's uh, you know, a life goes on, as my father said. Life is for the living, you know. Yeah. And you 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 know you you mourn for a couple of days, and then you get on with it. And uh, he's going to be uh, cremated, and then uh, there's not going to be a service or anything like that. And then there's going to be a memorial in, uh, in uh, I think they said August. Uh, no, uh, June. June. So you know, uh, w uh, that's it. You know. Um, please, please keep us posted about the about the, uh, the the memorial. Oh yeah, especially I'll let you know, Don. I know you'd be right. want to know. Most of these people don't live in New York, so it doesn't really matter, except for. Uh, Tony probably would yeah, want to know as well. So, hey, yeah. Alex. Yes. I put the links to the videos in the chat if anybody wants. Yeah, to. yeah. I saw that you put it up there. Okay. Uh, but you can also go to my Facebook page, and it just—it's right there. So. Oh, okay, yeah. great. So, take care of that, you know. But anyway, let me uh, let me start the theme here. Oh yeah, there it goes. Uh, and uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. Uh, I know, Josh, you haven't had much to say, but I do thank you for your, your thoughts and your uh, feelings about it today. I, I appreciate it. They were very appreciated. Yep, uh, no problem. Same thing with you, Kevin, being there for us earlier today in the early show. And, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Brian, uh, were you there today? Yes, you were there today, weren't you? No. No, you weren't there today. Okay. Uh, I, I think I missed it. It confused me because I saw something posted and I was like, what's yeah. going on? So. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, thank you very much, Alan, Jeff, Ray, Tony, uh, Patrick. Thank you for being here, pal. I really appreciate it. And also, some very nice uh, uh, words you sent me today. I, I, they were greatly appreciated. And Don, you know, if nothing more, this whole thing has kind of made us friends. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I should always show up five minutes before you close. Well, you, you're welcome to show up one minute before we close, just as long as you call us. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's the Citizen Panel for tonight, folks. And uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with the intersection, and uh, he... Uh, he, uh, he will be taking your calls at, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday with the uh, pop-up show. And again, next Wednesday, same time, same station in life, 1030 Eastern. Uh, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her.
okay? Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.